Hello and welcome to another IC3D tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at IC3D Dimension Modeler with Adobe Dimension. First, I'm going to create a couple of objects using our 2D Spinner tool. Head to the template library and drag on the 2D Spinner. From here, this should open up the 2D Spinner template. We're going to go ahead and import in our .dxf file from Adobe Illustrator. We created this previously and making sure it is all to scale. We want to match the uh, units that uh, we exported with. Hit continue, and then the 2D spinner tool should go ahead and spin our object full 360 degrees around, giving us a 3D object. Add this to the scene, and then let's go ahead and give it a quick name. Just going to name it jar. And then let's go ahead and create the lid the same exact way we created the base, again by importing in that DXF. Once we've added this to the scene, go ahead and give it a quick rename, just going to name it lid, and then we're going to grab that object again using our transform tool and bring it to the top of our jar. From here, let's go ahead and head to our material library and give it a quick recolor. I'm going to use anodized black for the lid and of course a nice glass clear material for our base. Now of course we want to fill this up with some kind of dip. In this case, we're going to be using our interior and fill tool. Select our object and drag that tool on, and you should be presented with our interior and fill template. From here, select between glass or plastic. I'm going to select uh, plastic in this case. Add a wall thickness, and then you can go ahead and add an interior, cutting off the top if we didn't do that in the 2D spinner tool already. And of course, in the same tool, we can then add a fill by selecting a certain material in our material library. In this case, I've got a onion dip fill that we're going to use. And then making sure, again, that it does look good before we add that to the scene. Let's go ahead and add a label to this glass jar by selecting the glass jar inside of our object editor and then hitting the connect to AI or PDF file. And what this will do is you can open up a AI or PDF document and it will directly apply that as a label onto our jar. So opening up my artwork here. Once our artwork opens, please note that it has been connected to IC3D because we were using IC3D to open this file specifically for our glass jar. Let's head back to IC3D. And inside of here, we now have our label to size and it also has all of the artwork already tied in. Let's go ahead and just pan this over to the front side. So uh, we have a nice front facing label. I'm using my arrow keys to uh, do small adjustments for the label, but if the label is completely off, you can just click and drag it around with your mouse. From here, let's go ahead and save out our IC3D document as we're all done in IC3D and we want to go ahead and bring this over to Adobe Dimension. Now that we've saved our file, we can go ahead and head over to our export options. And what we're going to find there is an export specifically for Adobe Dimension. So let's go ahead and select that export to Adobe Dimension. And from here, we should have two different options. The first option is to lay it flat on the ground when exporting. And the next option here is to save the Adobe Illustrator file on the hard disk. Uh, that's just so you have the file as a uh, extra export, just as a .ai. Hitting OK will then allow you to uh, rename this one more time, just so you know uh, exactly what you're exporting to.
Yes, we'll go through a quick loading process, but once it's done, we should be ready to go. From here, we want to go ahead and open up Adobe Dimensions. And inside of Adobe Dimensions, we're going to go ahead and create a new scene. And we want to go over to import in a 3D model. This model is the model we created and exported in IC3D. So we did all the creation in IC3D and brought it over to Dimension to finish this up in uh, a nice render scene. From here, we're going to use Adobe Dimension just to zoom in and get a good front view of our French onion dip. And now we can take a look and spruce up the rest of our scene. Like a nice glass material for our glass jar, I'm going to use glass material for this one. Just drag it right onto the jar and you'll be able to see that change. account as well that IC3D has exported not only the UV maps but the artwork as well as the texture used for the interior and fill. So Adobe Dimension again can take on all of these by either changing out those textures to whatever texture you would like to see or adapting that and changing out the materials and slightly tweaking them for the render itself. That's exactly what I'll do. So I'm just going to change the roughness and the metallic surface for this uh, for this jar lid right here. And we're going to switch this over to the renderer. And this is going to give us a really nice preview of what this is going to look like when we export it out. One thing it is missing, though, is a bag of chips. So let's head back to IC3D, create a new scene. And let's head over to our pillow bag template. And this is where we're going to be able to quickly create that bag of chips. Once the template window opens, we, all we have to do is add in the width, height, and any embellishment that we have inside of our artwork. Like, is the flap turned under? How heavy is this bag in terms of the contents? And the fill amount as well. We can then head over to our seals and add in specific seal amounts for each seal from our top, bottom, and the back seal. And even changing how the back seal is sealed. As well as looking at the crimp styles for both the top and the bottom crimped seal. We can also add notch holes or rip tags, so any type of hanger tag or cranulations as well to the top. If we don't want anything though and we're pretty happy with our bag, we can just add that to the scene and we can change things later. To save time, I've gone ahead and edited this bag in our point editor to give it a little more of a unique crinkle to it. And from here though, with our pillow bag template, it actually auto generates our artboard for us. So all we have to do is hit the AI button and our template window should open up. From here, we can open up the original artwork. Give it a quick copy and paste for all of the artwork elements that we need and then simply paste this in place right on top of our new artboard and just making sure that everything does match and everything's inside of our artboard. Making any small adjustments that we need and then sending that off to IC3D. Once up to date, we can head back to IC3D and we should have all of our artwork on the bag now so we can take a look and see how we did. If everything is looking good, let's go ahead and save our model so we can uh, prep this up to export out to Adobe Dimension.
Once we saved out our file, we can now export this to Dimension by simply going over to File and Export to Dimensions once again, checking each uh, checkbox if we would like any of those options, and then of course saving it in a uh, folder that's easily accessible. With the file saved, we can head over to Adobe Dimension, and now we can import this in and stick it right next to our French onion dip to make a nice render scene. So we're going to import this in once again. Again, that's just the .obj. Everything should come along with it. And there we have our material that we set, our artwork that we have, and as well as the bag itself. So let's drag this over using our quick little transform tool here and give it a quick rotate. Just set this up for a nice scene. And then we can also center it. All right, perfect. So once everything is looking good, we can open up the bag's material and go into the bag's texture to take a look at the AI file that we're using. Now, like IC3D, we can actually open up different AI files if we need to by just simply opening and selecting the AI file and then importing that in. And then giving it just a sec, we should see that AI file take hold. Now I use the same AI file, but just to show you how easy it is to replace this, we can also edit this in Illustrator as well. Now from here, I'm going to go ahead and just make some tweaks to the material to make our render scene look a little better. Making it, uh, just adjusting our scene here again, and letting it render out. If you've enjoyed this demonstration of IC3D Dimension Modeler and Adobe Dimension working together to create a very quick and very nice looking scene. Of course, using IC3D as the bulk of the creation, making custom jars, lids, pillow bags, and then eventually taking it into Adobe Dimension to add the final scene, materials, lighting, and any embellishments that you'd like to see. Thank you so much, and if you have any questions, please visit our website in the description.